Hello, good morning, welcome back to the fish lot there out on the boat. Right. I've been asked quite a lot this time of year. <laughs> they said, what do you do when it's bad weather? Looking at it in here like this now. Doesn't look too bad, does it? Yeah. This time of year, we usually get quite a lot of easterlies. Like as now, we have got strong easterlies, like 20 mile an hour easterlies. I'm tucked in under a little bit of headland there. So it doesn't look too bad here. Out there, it is horrible horrible easterly causes like a real short sharp swell it just makes everyone seasick and it's not pleasant <laughs> so it doesn't mean you can't go fishing times like that i'm still doing stuff I'm, I'm fishing in shore or i'm wrecking out new marks or i'm working out how to use my kit better or anything like that so today's video is going to be a little bit of an explanation of what i do when it's like this a little bit of how i use the kit to my own advantage and how i wrecky out new marks Hopefully I'll be able to show you some fish at the same time. We can but hope it's a nice day to be out. Let's see what we can do. Right, a little bit of an explanation of the kit that I use. The kit that I'm running at the moment is a Garmin Echo Map Ultra 122SV. And I have it set up as this. I have Blue Chart, which is like your relief shading. And I run that up on the same screen as a sounder so this is the sounder bed so I have a chart and a sounder running and what I do is I steam around at the moment I'm steaming around looking for bait so I just cut about maybe at about six knots to cover a bit of ground circle around where I think the bait fish might be and then when I find some I'll show you actually that might be some there on the seabed see that patch there on the seabed I switch to my live scope and that shows me what's going on. See that little patch there? That must have been something really small. But yeah, the, your sounder, the way that your sounder works is it gives you like a past tense direct representation of what was below the boat. So it's a bounce back. So whatever you see on there has already passed. So that when someone says, oh look, there's a shoal of fish and they're steaming, you've already steamed past it. But if you put the live scope on, the live scope shows you what's under there in real time so you can see fish actually swimming around. Hopefully I'll be able to show you. Right there, look. Just coming up to a patch of fish. And there they are in the live scope. So that shows me that they are 10 to 12 meters and it's a shoal that shows me what's right below the boat, so I know that they are on the left hand side of the boat. Does that make sense? So they're at 10 to 12 metres on the left hand side of the boat. Yeah, look, I've just stuck it in, stuck her astern to try and get back up onto them. There they are. That looks like that would be mackerel, that might be bass. But yeah, there they are. I'm going to struggle to show you, but that patch right in the centre of there, I've actually picked up a load of mackerel. You see? Unfortunately, this is the problem of doing everything single-handed, holding a camera one hand and fishing with the other. Right, unfortunately, this is just turning into an absolute drama. I can't, I can't show you what's on the screen because all I can see is my own reflection in the screen but there's a patch of fish there look yeah the wind's blowing the boat around so I can't keep it one place but as I tried to show you by steaming around I found them on the sounder by switching to the live scope the live scope could tell me on which side of the boat they were so I could swing back round on them and I've managed to get full string of mackerel so like I was explaining the sounder shows you what's past tense what's gone but the live scope as soon as you turn the live scope on that tells you what's happening right now so as I'm uh, that will show you see that patch there that will be little tiny pilchards or something just passing below the boat there's a little patch of fish there look that's a patch of fish that's a patch of pilchards The live scope is showing you exactly what's going on. So 
If I'm steaming around and I look on the sounder and I go over a shoal of fish, I don't know if they're going left or right or back or front or up or down, because it's just showing me what was happening at that split second as I went past. So by turning the live scope on, if I get back round over them, I can see possibly that they're swimming to port or they're swimming to starboard or they're swimming to the stern. So it gives me like more up to date of what's happening, not what has happened, if that makes sense. Yeah, that's, that's how I use it in this context. I also use it when I'm anchored up, and I'll show you that in a bit. But yeah, see if we can't get a few more of them mackerel while I kick them off. They are just coming through really sporadically. I can just see like the odd ones and twos coming through. But there, look, there's a patch of them. You see? They are six meters over there. And I've got some right below the boat right now at 10 meters. So if I switch this back over, those are the ones coming through at 10 meters. I'll show you what I mean. Yeah. So the ones over there at the side, I would never have seen them. But because I know they're there, I can swing the boat around that way and I can find them again. It's a cool piece of kit. What I'm going to try and do now, I can't show you out there because it's just too rough. Is there is a little bit of a wreck just up here. And I'll show you on my sounder, on the live scope, and on the on the chart, what it looks like on a wreck. Now, I don't know if you can see that coming up. But there is the wreck there. Here's my boat. There's a little patch of fish on the bottom. It's going to be quite hard to position it today, just because we've we've got the tide flooding in and we've got the wind across. We've got wind across tide. It's another reason why it wouldn't have been very good to anchor today. A small tide, which are good for anchoring, but if you've got wind across tide, especially with an easterly, it just swings you about all over the place, so you can't maintain one position. So if you're going to go wrecking, for instance, or if you're going to go fishing on a reef, by swinging around all the time, not only won't you be able to keep your bait where the fish are, but you snag up all the time as well. It's, it's just terrible. Right, we should be just coming up to the edge of it now, so you should just to start to see it. There we go. There it is there. So that's what the wreck looks like on the sounder. So it's all just broken. Switch it to the live scope and there it is. Just a little bit of a patch. There you go, see? And because there's, because there's that much wind, Look, we've just, we've just got blown straight round off it. That's why days like today, it's, it's just a drama. I'll swing back round one more time and try and go all the way over it and I'll show you it again. Should start seeing it just about now. There it is. See I like the broken bit on the bottom. Where it's real thick red, that shows it's dense. Because that's a seabed. So all this, that actually there might be a patch of fish. Somewhere on top of it. So these, yeah. Those little tiny marks just off the bottom there. I don't know if I can zoom this in. Yep. That'll be patches of wreck with little tiny fish above it. Let's see. See what I mean? As soon as you get broadside onto any of it, you just like. So yeah, days like today are days for wrecking out stuff. <laughs> but yeah, that's what it looks like. That's that's what a wreck looks like on the blue chart. That's what it looks like on the sander. We can't go back there. That's what it looks like on the sander. I'm going to show you really quickly, I'm not going to spend too long out there. I'm going to show you really quickly what it's like when you're not hidden behind the lee side of a headland. Look, we're just coming up past, just coming up past the headland there. Now the easterly winds, they blow all the way along the south coast. So you, this wind and all these waves will probably come all the way from Hastings. Heading into it, it's just shocking.
Yeah, look. And I've only come a hundred yards out of it. So when you're ashore and you're thinking, oh, it looks lovely today, John will surely be out in the boat. This is the reason why I'm not. <laughs> it might look nice when you're inshore, but as soon as you get out of any shelter at all, it's just horrible. And this rolling swell coming in here, I don't know if you can see it all. You get sideways onto it and you're just rolling about all over the place. So yeah, he still is a no good. <laughs> Go back in, see if we can't find some shelter and put the anchor down. Yeah, this is showing you what I've got here. And I can't because all I can see is my reflection. I've got quite a <laughs> I've got quite a distinctive silhouette, haven't I? This is what reef looks like, all broken ground. And you can see it's really broken, so it's jagged rocks here. Just a little bit too broken, but you can see the patches as we're coming through. Just can't keep the boat's head into the weather. Now look, these are all the little patches of seaweed you can see going past. There's a rock with some seaweed over it. So on a calm day, if you got anchored up in this, you can see the individual rocks and the individual pieces of seaweed. So if you're fishing for one specific fish down there, you can literally, you can drop a lure on its head. And when it, as the fish moves, you can react to it. We're going there now. It's easy to see how people get seasick on days like this, because it is just literally the whole day you spent like that. It's horrible. Right, I've stuck my anchor down and I'm just getting set up now. I'm just getting a couple of baits out, but this is this will show you as well. Is I'm just anchored up in a spot that's a little bit of shelter. On the sounder, it looks like it's flat. As soon as you switch to the live scope, it shows you that we're actually on the side of a bank. So it's sloping down. And all we're doing is as the tide's flooding in that way, we're just trotting some baits out. There's nothing really on this feature of ground, I just picked it because it was in a bit of shelter. Dogfish, bullhus, thornback rays, anything kind of like that, that's what we're after. I'm just trying to scratch out a bit of a session hidden underneath, a bit of a headland out of the wind. I'll trot you through the rigs as I'm all set up. A very angry little bullhuss. Now, these guys are called the greater cat shark. Now they can grow up to be near 20 pound. This one here has got all the attitude of a 20 pounder, but he's about a pound and a half. Tell the difference between these and dogfish because bullhuss greater spotted cat sharks I've got these nasal flaps those two little nostril flaps there what they are terrible for these and dogfish is when they get up onto a boat you see he's trying to rasp me with that skin the skin's like sandpaper and they'll bring it they're bringing their tail up and round and try and scratch it he just missed me there but yeah, he's taking that bait right down Greedy little fella, unclip the trace, clip on a fresh one, cast out, start again. Yeah, when they're writhing round like that, when they're all angry and they're siding about, there's no point trying to fight with them. Leave him there in that tub with a mackerel for 10 minutes, let him calm right down and I'll just take the hook up. Yeah, all the hook lengths are. These I've got, what's that? A foot and a half, two foot, 30 pound mono, ending in a 2 -o or a 3 -o specimen extra, and a little strip of black A 
little live prone on this one. I think someone's probably had it away. Thornback rays love prawns and crabs. Yeah, so much chewed it up. There we are. Calm down, got the hook out. We're a massive mouth for such a little fish, isn't it? There we go. Yeah, we'll catch them to be like that big. So any luck, his great great grandma might be kicking around. See as it's starting to bring a bit of a chop up. It means that instead of fishing straight off the back, the lines are going kind of in that direction. Don't know if you'll be able to see that bite there. Bullos give like a really aggressive bite. They're known for coming in and getting all of a bit and just ragging it. Thornback rays quite often, you won't even see like a little tiny bite, you'll just see it kind of hoop over. Doggies are a bit the same, doggies will just peck and peck and peck and peck. If you get a little tiny huss, sometimes they'll get the bit in the mouth and it won't even be enough to, to show a proper bite. You'll just really, after a while when you thought I haven't had anything on, you're really in and there'll be a little tiny one like that big on the end. They just use that massive mouth to cram as much food in as they can. See him? See that bite there? It's a little tiny one. A little tiny, tiny hoof. <laughs> Just ragging the baits. I think that's time to move. If all we're going to get is them little tiny hoofs, we're going to have to go somewhere else. Otherwise, we'll just have them all day. Right, this new area what I've just anchored up on, you can see there, that's fish on the sounder. Switch to the live scope, there are the individual fish. So they're on the side of the boat. There's the shoal there, look. Now this is the third spot that I've come to to try and anchor up and I just, I can't keep the boat still, there's just too much, too much wind across tide. Now if we don't get it here, I think we're going to have to call it because it's just boats swinging around too much. Look, well you can see here, look, every patch we've been to all this movement here is the boat swinging around on the anchor. So what I've done is I've put a stern anchor out and a forward anchor and I'm trying to tighten it up a little bit to hold it in position. But this is what you're up against. Quite a large and a very sandy dogfish. You can see this one has been right up the river. Just look how dirty and oh don't you start spewing up. They're terrible for as soon as they get on the boat they just start being sick. Look, have you seen how how dirty and sandy he is. That's where she's been living right up the river, right up in the estuary. Dogfish. Better than nothing though. Swinging around that much now that we've pulled out the stern anchor. Just hopefully we can try and, try and winkle out a couple more fish. If nothing, I hope this video has shown you how much you're up against when you've got strong easterlies all the time. Go 
how fat the belly is on that one. That's a slightly better bull hus. Getting quite a lot of doggy bites, just like little rattlers. Now, unfortunately, what you gotta do when you're swinging around this much, you can't keep the lines tight because otherwise you just drag them and drag them and drag them until they're right under the boat and they all get tangled. So you cast them as far away from the boat as you can and leave slack line. But unfortunately, by leaving a slack belly a line like that, it means that you often can't see the bite. Now, we have been getting a bite on this one. Because if you've left a lot of slack line out, look, yeah, it's there. Probably a little doggy. Oh no, it's still there. If you've left a, if you've left a slack belly of line like that and you strike, you just lift the line. So you have to wind right down to you find the fish. Really weird that. I think it must have been like a tiny, tiny hoof or a little tiny doggy. Because that was pecking at it and pecking at it and pecking at it. And even when I lifted into it, it was there. Yeah. Yeah, little tiny ones. Try and keep the baits as far away from each other as you can. Like I say, otherwise, every time the boat swings, it just drags them and drags them until they're all tangled up under the boat, and it's another drama. <laughs> Hello. Sticking that to the water, just calms right down. A lovely looking fish, aren't they? They are a fine looking fish. If you catch them in the sand or if you catch them somewhere clean like this, they are often quite pale. If you catch them out at sea, like in amongst the reef and the, like, all the kelp and that, they can be almost black. But they do vary a lot. This underwater footage is from the first location, quite deep and without any real features on the seabed. Harbour crabs and a rather cool anemone. This to me looks like a Sagatea undata and a little dragonette causing a fuss at the back. A grey gurnard pays a flying visit. And a few inquisitive waiting. The second location was a lot shallower and covered in old seashells. Nothing really to see except the queenly scallop. At least until the Godzilla of spider crabs moved in. The final location was just more empty seashells and a pair of duelling spider crabs stirring things up. A brief visit from a solo mackerel and that was it. Right, well, we have reached the end. I'll show you this here. Look, these marks here. All of those little stripes, all of these, is the boat swinging around like that on the wind. So we're covering an area of probably 25 meters there. See all of these tracks. The boat is just swinging round and round and round, and there's just nothing you can do about it. That's just what it's like. Now, right down, tucked in here, it's all right, but as soon as you get up, like any of this, it's just howling. And it's been like this for weeks. <laughs> right. So yeah, that's what we're up against. So anybody that's struggling to get out fishing at the minute, I feel for you, I really do. Because I mean, I'm in the same boat, <laughs> literally. 
Uh, yeah, it's just this time of year. Got to look forward to uh, to the summer species showing up soon. I mean, it, it is nice. I've not been put off that much that I might start course fishing, but it's getting that way now. If I can't if I can't get back out to sea next week or two, I'm going to have to do something. Try puddle trucking. Uh, I hope it's been interesting for you, showing a bit of kits that I use. I hope I have had a camera down on the seabed. But I don't know what it's going to have shown yet. It might have shown nothing. It might have just shown mud or crabs or we don't know. Uh, all the very best. See you later.